All right. This is our biome um, as a college project between several classes. Um, a biome is something which it creates an environment for um, exotic species such as plants and wildlife. Hold on. The, um, some of the classes did um, the brickwork, which you can see down here. And they also did the top panel of wood. And in the second semester, um, our group um, built the frame, which includes hammering in and um, filling in these little panel things. Um, I'll give you a tour inside. Um, when this um, on the outside walls, uh, it'll be covered in um, polyester, which um, magnifies the heat from the sun. And this is as if you were going inside. This will be the first door. It doesn't look like much yet, but it will do. Um, if you walk in, and this will be like a a double locking system. Um, you know, stop animals getting in and out. And then this will be this where the second door is. Um, I won't get too far in because this is some other students. Um, Here we are walking through the college biome. As you can see, there's one of our resident Turicos. He's a white cheeked Turico. This was all made and created by students studying zoological husbandry. We have the large umbrella plant there with a very, very, very supportive bio biological system. And we can even see a large, giant female rhinoceros chameleon enjoying herself over the sun, looking for insects and other small huggly puglies to feed on. If you notice, the eyes that actually move independently. What a beautiful specimen. Absolutely fantastic. She's using her tail to anchor down while she holds on to the reeds or the umbrella plants. The animals in here, in the water, we've got uh, Xenopus levis, the albino form, and also some very small musk turtles that live in harmony with the other species. Also the uh, small rescued iguana, that's the common iguana, it's walking through the trees. Wonderful specimen. Slightly nervous because he's had some surgery recently. He had a, a small cyst on his back. And you see that large piece of skin around his neck is known as the dewlap. Uh, start off as very omnivorous when young and then become more of a herbivorous or foliage species, eating more leaves and vegetation. We have uh, two species of chameleon in here. We actually have the chameleon mulleri, which you have to work hard to see, which are a large Tanzanian chameleon, often living in the ficus or the fig trees around here. See if we can go around and spot one. And I think I can see a foot. Oh yes, I can. Look at that amazing tail. We're seeing the rear of a uh, of a rather large, there's the toe where you see the toes are actually fused together. And there's the head end and the eyeball of a Mellor's chameleon, which have got amazing feeding techniques that you will also be able to view that have been filmed for Leia. That's the large male that we have there. So this is a real mini piece of jungle rainforest area. We house the giant tortoises or Socata tortoises here in the evening so they get uh, so they don't catch cold outside. The small quail we house here because they help clear the insects. They eat the ants and any invasive insect. So they're very, very useful for keeping the area clean. I'm still hunting for our male Jackson's chameleon. It's a wonderful animal that has the, uh, the three horns. But while we're hunting for the male Jackson eye, I've just come across the beautiful female Mellor's chameleon. It's doing her very, very best to camouflage. 
How wonderful is that why she's on a canna lily? Absolutely fantastic specimen. Years and years ago they used to use uh, tar to catch these on branches so the animals would be very very stressed, emaciated, thin, full of external parasites. But now we ethically trade these and they're bred and managed uh, in captivity by the Tanzanian government that uh, give licenses. You see how that eyeball is moving around and the other eyeball is moving independently. It's a cracking example of showing. And you'll see the flaps of skin just below the head area here. So you'll see just here is the, the flap of skin. And that's helping the uh, firmer regulation. Although reptiles are poikilothermic, relying on the external heat to keep them warm, they still do have the method of cooling down should the sun get too warm for them. Also, they raise them at the back of the neck to make themselves look larger should a predator come by.